Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me on Saturday afternoon as I give you the daily update on the COVID-19 pandemic here in Erie County. We have no new confirmed positive cases reported today in Erie County. Contract tr contact tracing continues with our Erie County Department of Health personnel. As I mentioned yesterday, you can assume that travel or direct contact is associated in all of the cases that we have reported thus far, unless I inform you otherwise going forward. If you do not personally hear from a public health nurse, you are not a close contact of an individual who has con be been confirmed to have COVID-19. And therefore, no further action is required. Our Environmental Task Force continues to receive complaints and is making courtesy stops this weekend to help businesses remain and be in compliance. Through our stay-at-home order, we are keeping our community as safe as possible. Governor Wolf and Health Secretary Levine announced that they have expanded the stay-at-home order to Beaver, Center, and Washington counties. So there now is a total of 22 out of the 67 counties across the Commonwealth who are under a stay-at-home order. The numbers in the state have continued to climb, and we see our neighbors to the south seeing fairly large jumps in their numbers, and I'm just going to reiterate a few of those. Uh, we know that the state in total has seen um, well over let me get to my numbers here, excuse me. Um, the state alone, I'm gonna have to come back to that, but Allegheny has 219 cases and Butler County uh, between here and Allegheny has 41 cases. Both of those counties have seen two deaths within their county. So of course, this has continued to rage across the Commonwealth and we are doing everything we can in Erie County to keep our numbers low and keep you safe. So if you have any questions about the stay at home order, consider this. 80% of the people who will get COVID-19 won't even need extra care. They will be able to treat themselves in their home, but they are contagious during this time. 20% of those who will need medical care, but many of them will be discharged just after a couple of days. And then a small percentage of those may require intensive care that could take up to two weeks or more. And unfortunately, as we've seen, a few can result in the loss of life. Our community has a considerable number of residents who are considered at high risk, our seniors, those who are over 65 years old. People who live in a nursing home or a long-term care facility. Those residents with underlying medical conditions like COPD, lung disease, asthma, heart disease, cancer, immunocompromised, and so on. Our youngest residents, our newborns and our infants. And also at risk are people of any age with severe obesity, and that would be a body mass index greater than 40, or who have certain underlying medical conditions, particularly if not well controlled, such as diabetes, renal failure, or liver disease. So I wanna thank all of the families in our region in Erie County who are doing and sacrificing what you must do to protect everyone else in our community. We understand how heartbreaking it is for our families who are separated from one another right now. We acknowledge how difficult it is for our elders who may be living in senior living facilities and nursing homes who are not allowed to have any visitors at this time. I want you to know that we see you and we hear you and we virtually embrace you. You are our pillars and you also are, and I ask you, if you're not, to become our prayer warriors. This community needs your prayers. This commonwealth needs your prayers. And this world needs your prayers. So I ask those of you who are feeling isolated and by yourself and wondering what you can do, 
prayer. Prayer is what I'm asking you to help us with. We in Erie County are simultaneously focusing on three priorities. Number one, managing the stay-at-home order and contact tracing. Number two, what we call flattening that curve so we don't get the number of cases that other counties close to us and in our Commonwealth and around this nation are experiencing. And third, expanding our hospital capacity so that if and when we see a surge in our community, there are enough patient beds, equipment, and caregivers to take care of those who need it. If the first two priorities are successful, then the hospital capacity should be much more manageable with the preparations that each one of our facilities is making. We do not want our hospitals to become overwhelmed. We want to avoid what other counties in our country are facing. I will say it again, and I will reiterate what Governor Wolf said just the other day. The way that we stay ahead of this spread is to assume that everyone that you come in contact with could potentially have COVID-19. So keep your distance, six feet at least, stay at home when possible, ask yourself, is it worth it that I go out right now? Wash your hands, practice good personal hygiene. And now I would like to speak to our first responders. First of all, thank you. Thank you for all you do to serve each one of us every single day. Our priority is to keep you safe while we tend to the emergencies of our community. We experienced the first COVID-19 patient being transported to a hospital just yesterday. Again, I spoke of this yesterday, but this individual is not an Erie County resident, but was traveling through our county. So at this time, I would like to invite Director of Public Safety, John Graffy, to come to the podium to say a few things about this case. And as I have for the last couple days when I've had someone join me, I have my disinfecting wipe to disinfect this podium prior to another speaker coming forward. Director Graffy. Thank you, County Executive Kathy Dahl Camper. The Erie County Department of Public Safety 911 utilizes an adopted dispatch protocol, protocol system established by the Air National Academy of Emergency Dispatch with guidance provided by our local medical director. Through the call interrogation process, when someone calls 911, if the information provided by the caller or if the caller is the patient, meets the criteria, our first responders, medical, fire, or law enforcement will be advised to utilize respiratory precautions prior to their arrival. However, the call information provided does not necessarily indicate this person may be positive for COVID-19. In reference to the COVID-19 patient who was transported to the hospital yesterday, during the call interrogation process, the caller, which was the patient, indicated to the 911 call taker that the individual had tested positive for COVID-19. Upon dispatch of emergency medical services, the ambulance crew was advised to utilize respiratory precautions and requested to call the communication center in which sensitive information to protect the privacy of the individual was provided over the phone prior to their arrival. I am proud of the professionalism by our public safety telecommunication staff and our first responders that responded to this medical call for assistance. They followed established protocol and executed properly. We understand and will honor, continue to honor the request from our first responders for COVID-19 information to be relayed, relayed as available at the time of dispatch. Thank you. 
And before the county executive takes the podium, I will follow the practice to disinfect the podium. Thank you, Director Grappi. And thank you again to everyone who is doing their part to help us stay ahead of the spread of COVID-19 here in Erie County. As a reminder, there are many resources and fact sheets available to you at eriecountypa.gov under our resources on the COVID-19 page. And again, there is a number, 451-6700, that you can call if you are feeling, if you have symptoms and you don't know what to do, or if you have another concern that the uh, Erie County Department of Health needs to be made aware of. So now I would like to put forward to our media the opportunity to ask questions. And today I'm trying to rotate here. I will start with Talk Erie. So Joel. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kathy. Appreciate it very much. This question comes from a listener of Talk Erie Radio regarding uh, they, they work at a life essential business and we are, he was wondering if you have thought about or been advised to start asking uh, that employers of life essential businesses begin to start screening employees. He is feeling like people are coming to work sick. In fact, somebody had to be sent home and it, they discovered that they indeed had strep throat. But people are coming to work sick and, and should we start in He's asking, should we start uh, uh, start screening with like a digital thermometer type of thing, much like uh, you know what is happening at a lot of other different places? So we believe that each business needs to look at their own operation uh, and determine what they need to do to keep their employees safe, their employees' family, and eventually the community safe. A digital thermometer check prior to someone coming into work is a very good idea. If uh, a business can get a hold of one of those and is willing to do that, I would encourage that. Uh, we also, through that 451-6700 number, offer assistance and guidance to any business that wants to know how they can do things better or if they are doing things um, according to the, pro the, the, the proper procedures lined out by the CDC. And so I recommend that if a business is unsure, uh, please um, reach out to us at the Erie County Department of Health we're there to help you be compliant. And I know businesses want to be compliant. And that's a lot of what we've been doing this week is working with our businesses to do that. But a digital thermometer check when people come in the door, uh, especially if you have a large number of employees, is certainly um, a very good way to, to screen. Uh, Jet TV. Yeah, hi, Kathy. Samir, uh, quick question. Do you have any updates regarding the patient transferred to St. Vincent or um, the quarantined group? I don't have any further updates uh, than what I've been able to tell you um, yesterday. Erie News Now? Uh, hi, Lisa here. Um, you mentioned that part of the three steps you have to be taking in the county is expanding hospital capacity. Um, can you talk a little bit about why you guys are uh, going through with that? I, I'm sorry, but I'm having uh, trouble understanding your question. Um, you mentioned that the three steps you're taking is expanding hospital capacity in the county. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the steps you're taking to do that? We're having some audio difficulties, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really not getting your full question. Hi, can you, Kathy, this is Lisa Adams. That was Rachel Neme. I could hear her question. Can you hear me better? I can hear you fine, Lisa. Yes. Uh, she was asking, um, you talked about expanding hospital capacity um, in the area, and could you elaborate a little bit more on what, you, uh, what you're working on, any specific locations or facilities that might be used as hospital capacity if needed? So we have a whole logistics team um, that has been working with our local healthcare providers to make sure, first of all, uh, we're looking at um, personal protection, protection equipment uh, to make sure that the supplies are adequate for the employees that would work there. Um, we are looking at contingency plans going forward 
um, on a whole number of fronts in terms of if we would have what they call a surge. Um, some of that may even be like where do people go to be quarantined or isolated if they cannot do that at home. And so we're looking at a number of those factors. The hospitals themselves are really um, the ones who ultimately have to make the decisions as to where additional capacity uh, would go if they need that. But we in Erie County Department of uh, Public Safety uh, is working through, particularly through our EMA division, is working directly with those hospitals to determine where that site or sites uh, could be if need be. But those are not, um, nothing has been uh, decided definitively on that at this point. Erie Times News. Yes, hello, Kathy. This is uh, Ron Leonardi. Um, Kathy, uh, last week, I think it was a week ago, Saturday, you reported that 32 county residents had been tested for COVID-19 at that point. Uh, have you received any updates on how many county residents have been tested to date? And if so, uh, are you encouraged by or satisfied where those numbers stand? I do not have that number, Ron, in terms of how many have been um, tested at this point. We do know our numbers have been increasing greatly since uh, both Allegheny Health Network and UPMC have gotten what they call their mobile testing sites up and running. And uh, so we are seeing an uptick in those, and that is actually a good thing because the more people we can test, the more we can try to isolate and uh, people and quarantine others that they've had contact with. But I do not have those uh, numbers from all of the entities that are testing. And you have to also realize there are some physicians who are testing simply out of their office and then sending those tests off to a uh, private lab. And so uh, we don't have the complete numbers when you look at all of the healthcare providers who could be testing. Talk Erie. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I just wanted to describe uh, my scenario last night of getting uh, an amazing Alfie's pizza. Okay, so uh, I'm I have to enter the place to do the pickup, right? They're and they're you know doing their part of socially distancing and so on. But I have to open the door. Uh, but the issue is is that um, with the total lack of hand sanitizer available in this market and every other market in America, seemingly. Um, I can't wash my hands. And so my question to you is, are we uh, to the point that would you encourage or is there CDC guidelines about wearing gloves, uh, especially if you're going out to go get a pizza or what have you or go to the grocery store? So there's a few things you can do. Uh, you can wear gloves and not everyone would have access to those, um, but that's one way to protect yourself and then throw those gloves away um, when you're done, you know, getting back into your vehicle and going home. Um, another thing to do would be to find some way to have a barrier, you know, that could be a paper towel that you could utilize from your car. You could grab it and you could use that to open the door and um, as you go in and out, and then again, throw that paper towel away rather than taking it back um, into your car or taking it home or throw it away when you get home. So uh, think about any way that you can have a barrier between your hands and a surface that might potentially have the virus on it. Um, you can still, you know, get out there and try to find where there is some kind of hand sanitizer. I know uh, I was at a CVS today. I think they had some there. So um, you need to maybe just, uh, when you're out, continue to look at the store. I don't want people going out you know, searching every store because I don't want people in and out of stores any more than they need to be. But if anyone knows of a source, you know, maybe you want to call your friends and neighbors and say, I just saw that there was something available and tell them where, or if you're even going out there and you want to buy some, uh, a few extra bottles and drop them off, particularly for that person who might live alone or that person who doesn't have an opportunity to get out as much. So um, all, again, all of us, let's try to help each other and help our neighbors. But when you get home, no matter what, wash your hands really good for at least 20 seconds and use that soap and water. That works as well as hand sanitizer. And so you want to make sure that you do that um, as soon as you have the opportunity to wash your hands. Jet TV. Yeah. Hi, Kathy. So um, realistically, looking at how uh, the Commonwealth's numbers continue to rise uh, with positive cases of COVID-19, do we actually see uh, the orders being lifted on April 6th with the stay at home order? Do you, like, do you think that's when we're realistically going to start to go back to a normal? 
So that's very difficult to answer because none of us know exactly where this is going. But as you mentioned, you know, our state numbers are up to, I couldn't find this earlier in my papers, but they're up to 2,752, including the eight here in Erie County. Um, we saw almost a doubling in some of the counties overnight. Uh, I've talked to some of my counterparts in other counties who have many more cases, po positive cases than we have. Uh, they're expecting um, to see a surge of some sort you know, in the next week or so. Um, so I think we have to continually look at where the numbers are and what's going on around us, and uh, and know that we're ahead of the we're ahead of the game here because we've done so well in in our social distancing and our stay-at-home order and getting that so early compared to so many other counties. Um, so I'm hoping that we can head off the worst of what we're seeing in other places. But the sixth is a date that, in me, to me, is just a date right now that we have put down, but it certainly is a date that could very easily be moved and very well likely may be moved to further in April. Uh, really fast follow-up. So we've talked a lot about, uh, obviously, other places anticipating a surge. I know you said the hospitals are kind of preparing here. So then uh, do you think Erie County overall is prepared for a surge if we possibly did get one of COVID-19 positive cases? We are trying to be as prepared as we can. It depends on what happens here. If the surge is small, I think we're in good shape. If the surge would get very large, like we've seen in some other places around the country and around the world, then I think it's very difficult. Um, you know, you have to think about not only do you need to have beds, but you need to have the equipment, uh, whether it's the personal protection equipment or whether it's uh, other equipment such as ventilators, and you have to have the caregivers to, uh, to also be there. So those are all things that um, we wanna make sure we have enough of. That's why it's important that people um, keep themselves distanced from others so that if somebody is working in those life-saving um, situations that they themselves can hopefully stay well. And um, so not only thinking about yourself getting it, but you know, if you might be a carrier yourself, you be, might be giving it to one of our healthcare workers who needs to stay well. And so all of us, we need to work together to make sure we're, we're taking care of our community. I'm going to... Um, ask Erie News now and then after Erie Times News and then I'm going to come to a question that was asked from a, someone who called into the station here. So first though, Erie News now. Uh, this is Lisa. Oh, Rachel, go ahead. Lisa. I can't understand Rachel. I'm sorry. Rachel, go ahead and see. I, you sound clearer to me now. Go ahead and ask that question. If she can't hear you, I'll repeat. <laughs> uh, compared to counties like Allegheny and Butler, why do you think here in Erie we're still seeing such a low number of cases? I think the question was with seeing the numbers in Allegheny and Butler, why do I think Erie County is low numbers? Is that correct, Lisa? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, I think we are in lower numbers for a number of reasons. One, I have been preaching social distancing for a couple weeks now, and our community has responded. Number two, we put the stay-at-home order in um, way before any other county who had our kind of small numbers did. Um, I spoke with my counterparts in Butler and Allegheny today. Um, one other thing with Butler and, some, and 57 other counties across Pennsylvania is they don't have a health department. We have a health department with trained people out there working every day. These other counties can't even do contact tracing because they don't have the capacity. They don't do that kind of work. Uh, it's really up to the state to do that, and the state's trying to cover 57 counties, plus also the 10 counties who do have health departments in terms of giving us guidance. So we're in a much better place uh, because of the investment in public health in our community here in Erie County, and I think that's actually one of the really big reasons why we are seeing lower numbers than many of our other counties that are similar size or smaller size than us. Now, Allegheny County, you have to remember they have a lot more people than we have, so obviously more difficult to sometimes contain the type of spread we're seeing because of the close proximity of people living uh, in the same areas and just the number of people coming in and out of that community from other countries and other states. Um, we have some of that, and again, we've addressed that a number of times in asking people who do come here, uh, no matter where they come from, from outside Erie County, to quarantine themselves for 14 days. But I think all of those things that I've been asking everyone to do and people in this community have really stepped up and, and done, uh, that is huge in terms of helping us contain this virus in Erie County.
Uh, Airy Times News. Yes, uh, Kathy. Hey, can you talk about the uh, just uh, what you're hearing, what you're seeing about just the impact in the last week of those drive-through testing uh, COVID-19 sites? Well, I think the impact is that uh, we're we're getting a lot more people tested. We're helping people um, understand if they have it or not, and of course that gives them peace of mind if they don't. And I believe there's been a lot of negatives. I don't know what those numbers are, but since we only have the eight positives, then we know that we've got a lot of people who are negative. And so I think that is uh, one of the impacts is that we're able to find those people who are positive, get their contacts um, informed right away, get those people quarantined, get the person who's positive isolated, and stop that spread uh, anywhere in our community um, as much as we can. The question that had come in uh, to the station here was, what about caregivers who work um, many hours and helping uh, an individual, maybe often an elderly person or uh, obviously somebody who is already uh, sick in our community? I guess go back to the same things we've been telling everybody, and that's make sure you use the best possible hygiene you can as you go into that home. And the caregiver needs to limit their exposure on the outside world before between times, between they're going into that person's home. Uh, if that person is not alone and has other people in their own household, then obviously those people in that household also need to understand that they have even a more um, important role in keeping themselves socially distant and keeping themselves safe and not bringing the virus into the home. So having those open, honest conversations um, not the caregiver needs to have that with anyone else who's in that household. The caregiver needs to have that with the people in their own household that they're going home with. And so it really, now you've opened that circle more. Um, and obviously it's very important that the caregiver go and give that kind of help. But everyone needs to have very open, honest conversations about what needs to happen to keep certainly the individual they're ca taking care of safe, the caregiver safe, and everyone in those circles that they're dealing with. Um, let's see. Talk Erie, do you have any final questions? Just one last question, Kathy. Um, to follow up with Ron Leonardi's question about testing and negatives, um, I'm looking at the, count, uh, the statewide website, 25,054 negatives. Isn't the Erie County negative number a critical data point that needs to get sent every day to the state? And uh, isn't that just something that's, that's available at our health department? You know, I will try to find out some better numbers for this uh, for my next press conference. I don't have them with me. Um, it's not something that I've, um, that I've focused on for this press conference, but I understand that there's an interest in this, and, and I'll see what I can find out for you uh, by my press conference tomorrow. It, yeah, it, it's a critical ratio that everybody's watching. It is a ratio, and I know everyone's watching it, but we also know that there's probably many people out there who um, are uh, infected with COVID-19 and either have no symptoms, have mild symptoms, um, and are not getting tested because they just don't even know that they have it uh, or even believe that, have any inkling that they have it. So the, uh, the best testing that we've seen across the globe is when they can test pretty much anyone, symptoms or not. Here in Erie County, because of the limited testing available, we're only testing people who have, are symptomatic. And even sometimes people who are symptomatic are being told, no, don't go for testing, just stay home, because they maybe live with somebody who's a positive, and so it's just assumed that they do have it. And as long as it doesn't, the test won't make a difference, you still need to stay home. So um, they're not sick enough to go to the hospital, I should say. So that's why. The negatives, as important as I know people want to know about them, I think that what we can glean from that is not as important maybe as it would be if we really had true um, widespread testing in our community. But I will work hard to try to get some numbers for you for um, tomorrow or Monday at the latest. Um, Jet TV, any final questions? Yeah, so I have a couple questions. Uh, the first one's going to be for you, and the second one will be for Director Grappy. So um, this one's kind of just a health-related question, but is the issue uh, of getting, like, the COVID-19 germs on your hand, or is it actually uh, the probability of just having it transferred to areas like your eyes, nose, or mouth? I'm sorry, could you ask again? I'm, I wasn't quite clear on what you're asking here. So I guess is the issue of getting like COVID-19, is it like the fear of just getting the germ or is it the, just the fear of 
possibly transferring it to your like eyes, nose, and mouth. So the virus has to enter your body somehow. And so what happens is you get it on your hands and then you go and you touch your eye or you take a piece of food and you eat it or somehow it gets into your body that way. It gets transferred into your body. Um, if it's on your hand, if it's on my hand right now, it's not doing anything to me if it's just on my hands. So when I go home and I wash my hands really well before I do anything, like eat dinner, um, then I have now greatly reduced any chance of that virus that I maybe had on my hand from touching something someone else had touched from getting inside my body. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and then I have a follow-up that I wanted to, that a viewer sent in. So they were basically asking, so since we aren't, testing everyone uh, as you just mentioned some people who might be symptomatic aren't being tested it kind of seems like that might be masking the number of actual cases i i would agree with you that it is masking the number of actual cases and the unfortunate thing is we just don't have enough tests and this has been a problem in the united states since this covid 19 pandemic became um, known to the world and we do not have enough tests testing case, uh, kits, we don't have enough reagent, we don't have enough swabs, we don't have enough of everything we knew to do, to do mass testing. Um, Korea, South Korea, is an example of a, of a uh, country that did mass testing, kept their numbers very low, and um, well, was able to actually, I won't say their numbers were low because their numbers were quite high, but once they started mass testing, they were actually able to make a big difference in um, the spread of that disease in that country. But the testing has been a huge issue across this country. And certainly Erie County is no different than any other county in the United States. So then from the folks you're talking with, like from the State Health Department, do we see that issue being resolved anytime soon or no? I don't see it being resolved anytime soon. I think uh, it's, it's something that has to change for the long run. And we need to invest more in public health and we need to make sure that for whether it's a res resurgence of COVID-19 down the road or, or some other virus, that we need to be prepared and ready for this. And we weren't ready. And uh, now we're playing catch up um, across the nation. I'm no expert when it comes to this. Uh, my information is coming from other experts. So um, I really don't, you know, don't take me as the expert in this. It's just what I read, what I know, what my experts are telling me is uh, the issue and why um, the United States, as we know, ha now has more cases than any other country in the world. Uh, and we are far surpassing um, China's numbers. We far surpassed Italy's and, and every other country. And those numbers continue to climb across this nation. And that's why I am working so hard to make sure that we control what we can control. As I say to people, we can't control what's happening on the national level. We can't even control what's happening on the state level. The only thing that we have any control over, and it's only as good as the people who are partnering us with, is we only have control over Erie County. And everyone listening today can help with that control in Erie County. And we can't do it alone. If everyone decides they're not gonna follow these orders and, and they're gonna do whatever they wanna do, we won't be able to stop the spread of this. So testing or no testing, we know what we have, the tools we have available to us. And today, the tool that we have available to us is the stay-at-home order, the social distancing, and the good hygiene. Those are the things I cannot preach enough, and everyone in, needs to be with us on this. Um, we've had great response in this community. Again, I, I, everywhere I go, I'm just very, very grateful for the people I see who are listening and are doing their part, and we have to keep doing that. Erie News Now? Uh, no more for me. How about Erie Times uh, now? I, I did. Oh, sorry. Go, uh, go Kathy, ahead, Lisa. I, this is Lisa Adams. This is Lisa Adams. I did have one, and that had to do with uh, what John Grappy had to say. He seemed to say that he was pleased with the procedure that was followed yesterday, but as you said, this was the first time having to transport a COVID-19 patient in the county. So what, what lessons were learned there, and would you do, or are you preparing first-line emergency workers in any different way for the second time that comes along. So as we reviewed what happened in the incident and how uh, the procedures were followed, uh, what we can say is that the procedures were followed, um, set out by international standards. Uh, our team at the uh, 911 call center, as well as those who received that dispatch and went out on that call, 
Uh, everyone followed the procedures that they should have been following. Um, and so we feel very confident that uh, the right things were done and there will be uh, no further changes to how we proceed, uh, but we're always looking at how a call goes, making sure things were done correctly and, uh, and making sure they were done efficiently and as quick as possible. So um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to my staff in the call center who are very professional and do their job very well. Um, and I'm very proud of our first responders who also uh, were given the orders to use respiratory protection. They did that. They kept themselves sa safe while they safely transported uh, that patient to um, St. Vincent's Hospital. And Erie Times News, do you have any last questions? Uh, no further questions. Well, I want to thank you all again for joining me today. Thank you again to our uh, residents out there who are doing so well. And, and I know this is not easy. I know that it's very difficult to be separated from your family, from your friends, uh, from your neighbors, and um, just commend every one of you for what you're doing to help us. You are our partners in this, as is the media um, that is helping us get the message out every single day. So keep yourself safe. So stay home, stay safe and stay calm. Thank you.